What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back Thursday, January 7th. And time to talk a little NBA DFS and take a look at the five-game slate tonight. Uh, it does start about a half hour later than normal, so if you guys want to check that out, just have that noted mentally for uh, when you're getting your lineups ready. Yeah, uh, can't hurt us. Uh, the big thing for me that I like about it is the game. The difference between the games is only an hour and a half. Nothing wrong with that, guys. So um, hopefully everybody had a nice Wednesday. Definitely had some uh, late stuff that worked out pretty well. So let's continue to try to get after it today. Uh, I'll re-shout out uh, Kevin from the other night for his big $20,000 win. Congratulations, Kevin. We brought that up yesterday. Uh, and just to reiterate, guys, we are taking on new show sponsors. So have a few meetings to go through today and yesterday. And uh, looking for people who might be interested in uh, having their name brought up and routinely and working with the five pack. So if you're interested, hit me up in my DMs. We can discuss that. And today's current five-pack promotion, buy the NBA package today, so take down the rest of the season of NBA, and I will throw in this weekend's NFL write-ups for you if you need some NFL DFS information for the weekend slates. Sweet. I'm excited to talk some NFL with you after this. Yeah, we'll be getting into NFL right after this, guys. Uh, day passes are available as per usual. They're available through the website. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Uh, and, guys, you've been doing, killing it with the thumbs-ups. Keep it coming. It's appreciated by us. All you got to do is slide your finger over to the thumbs up button. Helps us out a ton. Uh, we'll continue to rock the new format for the year. So let's talk about cash game lock for the day. And I do reserve a little right to change the point guard one today. As it stands right now, there's a lot of big money point guards in play. And I'm looking at Luka Doncic, who is still very affordable at 10-5. Luka had a bad start to the year. The three ball wasn't falling. His typical rebound numbers weren't there. We've seen both of those things change over the last two games. And he's actually played really well in three of four. Lost a little run in one game because they won in a blowout. And then had a just his whole team played awful against Charlotte the other day. But the last two, he's played really, really well. We've seen him shoot the ball better. We've seen him get his rebounds. The assists have been there. Um, there's a couple of big money point guards people are going to be looking at. You know, we did a, a Twitter poll today. There's LeBron, there's Damian Lillard, there's Kyrie Irving, there's Luka Doncic. If you're looking for a reason to play Luka and you can't decide between him and Kyrie, one thing that Luka has working for him that Kyrie doesn't, Kyrie has to play tomorrow in Memphis. So if that game gets a little lopsided one way or the other, then Kyrie's, you know, more than likely to you know, maybe have his minutes watched a little bit. The flip side of that is Luca does not play tomorrow. Also, we discussed this one at length, and our gut feeling is this is a close competitive game between the Denver Nuggets and the Dallas Mavericks, two teams that are very likely going to make the playoffs in the West. And if it comes down to it, and you're kind of 50-50 on those two guys, of course, you can obviously play them both. But if that's a gun-to-the-head decision, that should be maybe like a coin flip reason to take a look at the guy who doesn't have a game tomorrow. No doubt. I mean, you know, talked about it on the members-only video. Whenever... Durant is out. You got to at least take a look at Kyrie, but that doesn't mean he's a must play every slate. Durant is out. And I'm with you on all these points. I think I, well, I, we both expect a competitive game in this spot. Luca has really started to turn it around. He's, you know, looking like the MVP that everyone thought he would be. Uh, you know, you expect a little bit extra pep in his step going against Jokic. Just a lot to like here. And while it isn't the crush spot amongst crush spots, we really never like picking guys in Denver. It's a smaller slate, so we don't really have a ton of crush spots anyways. Also, Denver's defense has not been as good to start the season like it was True. at moments last year. We just saw D'Angelo Russell and Juancho Hernan Gomez light this team up. You know what I mean? So, like, they're not playing the best defense that we saw at them from points last year. So, take that for what it's worth. Uh, if you like Kyrie or Dame or LeBron or anybody better, I can understand the arguments you might make for him. But I would advise spending up at the point guard position today because there are some really, really good options, and this is one of them. And he's where I'm leaning as of right now. We also know that between Luka and Dame and Kyrie, one thing Luka has for him over Dame and Kyrie, which also have good arguments for both of them, Luka does a lot more. He's a better rebounder. He's just as good of a passer, if not better than both of those guys. In fact, he is the better passer. He's better with the assists. So there is a little bit more upside. Like, Luca's a guy who gets to 70, 80 a little bit more regularly. No doubt about that. All right. Next up, uh, your boy, Mr. Brooks, Dylan Brooks. It wouldn't be a day if Matt wasn't talking Dylan Brooks. And one of the things that we were able to hash out in the members-only video, there are really good reasons to why Dylan Brooks has not been great with Morant out. It's been a, you know, foul trouble, uh, blowouts. Not something we're overly concerned about tonight. 
Yeah, the only way that this game blows out, in my opinion, is if Memphis rolls. And that means Brooks is probably doing something good there. You're right. He's been stuck in some tough matchups, foul trouble, blowouts. He's hadn't had great games the last four or five since Morant's been out. But this is a, a really good spot for him to bust out against a Cleveland team that probably has tired legs on the heels of a back-to-back. You know, played in Orlando last night with Colin Sexton hobbling a little bit. I forgot to even mention that on the members only video. It completely slipped my mind, which definitely doesn't hurt, help the Cavs at all. Listen, Brooks is just, uh, he's more of a solid, if not spectacular guy, but at this price point, I think you're going to see upside in a game where the defense is finally going to give into him a little bit. Again, really tough matchups recently, finally in a good spot. I like Brooks at 6,300. You know, he's mainly, he's mainly been garbage since Morant left, as far as his scores go. But I think that's a good thing here. Because we know this guy can play, because the game log watchers are not going to be um, very drawn to the minutes, the production that we've seen out of him, there's a lot of reasons to think that could change today. The hot shooting hasn't been there. That could come tonight. This is a much easier matchup. He's not going up against a Boston or a Lakers. He's going up against the Cavaliers. And it might pain you as a Cleveland fan, but like you know darn well, the Cavaliers are not the Lakers, not even close. This is uh, one team has LeBron, one team used to. So this is a much better spot for Brooks than he's been in. Uh, if the shooting starts falling, I think he has legit like 45-point upside right here. And it's not like you're going to get him at 1%. But I do think like people have kind of soured on him because he hasn't succeeded for a variety of reasons over the past week or two. So this is a good like quote unquote breakout spot for him. Yeah, amen to that. I agree with all those points. Clearly, he's priced affordably at sixty three hundred, and you're right. I think the game log watchers are definitely going to be off him. He hasn't played well since Morant's been out. Uh, really good spot for him here, and I'm glad that you see it my way. Right, and I mean, this is the guy that I was a little turned off by, but after we talked it out for a longer period of time, there are reasons to like him more here than he's been liked the last few games. Mm-hmm, no doubt. All right, so a guy that we were both kind of looking at to start the day was uh, a guy who kind of busted out the other day after a little bit of a rougher start to the season. That is Yusuf Nurkic of the Portland Trailblazers. One, he's only 6,200. And we were kind of discussing this. Y'all remember in the bubble last year and towards the end of the season when Nurkic was balling and he was like 8K? I want to say his price got to darn near 10K at one point. And while that doesn't necessarily matter for today, it is a reminder that when Nurkic is playing well, he is a much, much better player than 6,200. So this is another guy. The minutes have been down a lot recently for a variety of reasons. Foul trouble, which can happen any day. Not overly worried about it when he's going to be guarding Ed Davis for most of the first quarter, but it could happen. Uh, but not overly concerned about it today. Loss of minutes due to a blowout. Okay, that could happen here. Minnesota is not a very good basketball team. But the most important thing for me is if you watched the Blazers play the Bulls the other night, the Blazers announcers couldn't shut up about how much better Nurkic looked. Like he had just looked off for the last week or two. And they're like, this is the Nurkic that we know, looking aggressive, looking good on his feet looking agile. I think this is a very upside play right here in a very good spot. Yeah, agreed all the way around. We both really like him here. I mean, again, I think the biggest point is his $6,200 price tag. Even if you don't like love the upside, I mean, we know who this guy is. You mentioned it. He was 10K in the bubble, showing big upside on a consistent basis. That's not the only time we've seen that either. That wasn't like a TJ Warren thing. We've seen him at big upside before. He's in a real good spot here against a Quite frankly, undersized, undermanned Minnesota front court. He should eat in this spot. Again, foul trouble can happen at any time, but this is not the spot where I would call it out. Like Nurk a lot here. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. I was glad you were on board because this was one of my favorite plays on the slate when I popped it open this morning. Um, so when you watch basketball, and I know a lot of you guys do, your eyes can lie to you a lot, right? Like, and if you're just going off of like, oh, Nurkic looked good last game. Well, maybe he won't look good today, but like this is a guy that we've liked a lot in the past. So there's a lot more than just he played well last game that goes into this one. But of course, we also love the fact that he played well last game. So this is kind of like taking those two things and putting them together. He's underpriced. We've seen production from him in the past. He's got a good matchup against Minnesota. He finally got rolling. So there's so many things working here today that I, I think that like – he covers a lot of things we both look at, which is great and why we both like him today. Mm-hmm. So um, all systems go on this one, cash games or GPPs, in my opinion. Yep. 
All right, so let's talk about the long shots for the day, and we're going to pull two guys from the Cleveland versus Memphis game. And I got one from Memphis. You got one from Cleveland. I think and import. Go ahead. I was going to say timeout. I think they're both very playable together. Yeah, for sure. Um, there is every game this year seems to have blowout opportunity, which I don't think could hurt either of these two guys right here. So I do think they can both be in play for a variety of different reasons. So I'm going to start with Melton. And we remember, guys, last year, Melton, a lot of games, would end up outplaying Tyus Jones and then seeing extended run at the point guard position. Now, he had an injury, and he lost a few games. He was active and didn't play. He was a DNP two games ago. And then he got back into the rotation last game. Had a decent game. I think he played 16 minutes, if my memory serves me correctly. Uh, meandered into a decent point total. But one of the reasons he'll get very little love today, in my opinion, is because you have a guy like a Bruce Brown who played well for a lot of people the other day at shooting guard at a very similar price point, going to be starting versus coming off the bench, going to be playing in that first game. So I think you get Melton at, at low ownership today against the Cavaliers team we're not scared of. Uh, this is a guy, too, that maybe in blowout he plays, but also should see minutes even if the game is competitive. So there's a couple of reasons that he could be even better. And I'm going to piggyback to the point that, like, while Tyus Jones is a starting point guard here, we've seen Jones have plenty of bad games before that if Melton comes in and plays well, I don't think it's crazy to think that Melton could play 25 minutes today and be running with the first unit at points. Or if there is a blowout, that he's out there getting reacclimated and playing in there. So I think he is. There's multiple ways I think I could see him playing minutes today, but I'm assuming he's out there no matter what. I agree. And we've seen Memphis struggle without Morant. Now they're in a good spot tonight. And I think Tyus Jones is a better point guard at running the team. But Melton is the better offensive player. If they need, you know, that spark, it's going to be Melton. He's only 3,300. I agree with you. 16 minutes last game. Kind of expect that to increase to about 20 here. And depending on game flow, it could be 25. Right. If he's just playing well, which he's capable of doing, this is a guy that has 10x possibilities tonight. Now, again, yeah, he could also go back to playing 12 minutes. Uh, or barely touching the court at all. You know, they got, uh, who's the other? Bain is another guy. They kind of like him a little bit. They're trying to see what they got right there. So it's not guaranteed, but that's why he's listed under long shots here as opposed to uh, just a guy like I'm inking in here. Because wouldn't you, a guy like Bruce Brown, I'm assuming, just gets much more love. Yeah, I think Bruce Brown gets more love for sure. So uh, a way to be different. And he's also a guy like Bruce Brown should get more love. But Bruce Brown's got a couple guys on his team in Karis Levert and Kyrie Irving that are just significantly better basketball players. So, like, the idea that Bruce Brown's balling and Kyrie Irving is on the bench, that ain't happening unless there's, like, a major, major point discrepancy. Like, Melton could outplay Tyus Jones and see extended run over him. No doubt about that. No doubt about that. We know who, you know, I'm hard on Kyrie Irving, but Kyrie Irving is 10 times the basketball player as Bruce Brown. Oh, yeah, I mean, yes. All right, so let's move over to Matt's long shot of the day. This is the guy you brought up on the members only video, and I don't think many people know much about him. Yeah. Uh, Cause he's not a guy I know much about. So I'm assuming that most people are gonna be in the same uh what's the best way to look at the same boat. This really gets my juices flowing. You know how I operate, and like it's rare to get guys, especially nowadays, that like not not even that people aren't gonna play, that people like literally haven't even heard of. And not to say Lamar Stevens is a, a star. You know, but at 3K, we saw him play close to 20 minutes last night. This guy was a four-year starter at Penn State, a really good scorer in the Big Ten. So, while that doesn't mean he's going to be great in the NBA, he's got game. I watched him a lot in college. He's good. He he's, doesn't need to be great. He's min-priced at small yeah, forward, right? He's min-priced at small forward, but he actually got a lot of backup point guard run last night. Sexton got hurt, as I just mentioned it, which I didn't even talk about on the members-only video. He got hurt right before halftime was actually a big concern that he wasn't going to come back for the second half. Came back for the second half, but said it limited his mobility. If they've talked about it today, he's going to try to go tonight. I expect him to play. But I don't expect him to play like the 40 minutes that we've seen him play sometimes. Stevens has earned his, his way and gained his way as one of the guys that the Cavs are playing off the bench. He's min-priced at forward eligibility that's getting run at point guard. I think that, again, in the right game script, specifically a blowout, you could see him play like, you know, 20 to 25 minutes and 25 DK points isn't out of the question. And I'll take that all day at 3K. 
I want mean, you guys to really think about how beat up the Cavaliers are right now. One, uh, Garland's already announced his out for tonight, I believe, right? Yes, he's out. He's out for like a week, I think. Okay. Sexton is a little banged up. Porter has he's a complete no-show at this point, isn't even around. Like, we almost even forget Kevin Love is on this team like, because he's just never healthy. Axum got hurt a couple games ago. Yep. Another guy we don't even talk about is Della Vadova. Like, not that he's good, but he's taking up a roster spot and he's hurt. So, like, all these guys being out opens up a guy like Lamar Stevens. Man, and, like, think about it from this perspective. Like, what if, like, the first quarter goes on and, like, Cleveland just, you know, on the tail end of a back-to-back. Sticks. Oftentimes, teams on back-to-backs play well, but this is back-to-back with travel. Cleveland's not a very good basketball team without all right. these players around. And, like, let's just say, like, Sexton tweaks it in the first quarter. And, like, Cleveland's down 41-23, to and they just throw in the towel. You can see a min price small forward play 30 minutes. Yeah. Like that's not the guaranteed thing, but we're talking long shots right now. Like we are you know, like at one percent ownership or less. Less than one percent ownership. You mentioned it with Melton that he could 10x. Like I think he's likely to 10x than Stevens, but in that game script you just said he could 10x. Yes. So you could pair a Melton and a Stevens together at a combined sixty three hundred. And again, guys, this is long shot scenario. Please, if you're playing a cash game, like, you know, like Bruce Brown and Juancho Orn and Gomez are going to have much higher ownership. But if you're looking to get weird with it and play in a deeper tournament and you're looking for guys that could, you know, in the right scenario, outscore those dudes. I mean, these are guys who are going to get much, 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 much lower ownership. And if that is the kind of game script that we get, like they could be diamonds in the rough, not safe plays, diamonds in the rough. And that's why they're under the long shot category today. And they can get you studs in other games. And even in that script, though, like even if playing Melton and Stevens, I still like Brooks. I like him more in a competitive game. But at only 6,300, I think that if, if Memphis like rolls like that, he's a big part of that. So you're not like spending, I know you talked about on the members only video, like 10K on Dame. Brooks is much cheaper than that. Yeah. So like Brooks and Nurkic to me are two guys that are similar today in the idea yeah. that like, Mm-hmm. I, I don't need them to be competitive for fourth quarters because if Memphis rolls right here, Brooks probably hit some threes in the first half and he at least got there to like a solid floor. The same thing goes with Nurkic. Like in order for Dane to really shell out on a price take of over 9K, he needs to close. He is one of the better closers in the game. He needs it to be competitive for fourth quarters. Nurkic is a guy that we've seen, you know, when the Blazers get off to a hot start, walks out of the first quarter with like 14-9, three assists and a block and a steal. Maybe he doesn't play him much the rest of the game, but he damn near hits cash value in the first quarter. So, like, it's a different way to get there. You know, you got to understand how your guys get their points normally. For sure. I will say, though, like, and I love these conversations, like, I still would rather have it be closer because Definitely. there's also scenarios where, like, in Memphis, J Val goes off early and Brooks isn't needed and, like, you know, ends up losing run. Obviously, Nurkic with the same with McCollum and Lillard. But the point is that these guys are mid-tier, if not a little bit cheaper than mid-tier. And if they get there, like, early, which is very plausible in the matchups they're in, like, everything else is gravy. Like, uh, I'll, going back to, like, the Blazers game, which is a little off-subject for Lamar Stevens, but, like, I would challenge anybody, and this would be a hard stat to find, and so I know nobody is actually going to do it, but go find the games where Damian Lillard has showed GPP upside – that weren't competitive for Portland. It happens rarely because Damian Lillard is a guy who takes over fourth quarters. And because he doesn't get double-digit assists and rebounds very often, he needs a competitive game where he's hitting threes down the stretch for him to show you those 70-point like upside type of games. Uh, Dylan Brooks, because he's so much cheaper, can go insane in the first quarter, hit a bunch of threes, and he can give you GPP upside without needing to close. Amen. But, of course, we prefer it if he's out there in the fourth quarter. Yep. So, I don't know. That's a little off subject, but we like talking basketball, guys. So, uh, that's what we're looking at for today. Obviously, it's NBA, DFS. Things are going to change. You know, we brought it up a lot yesterday. Like, there was a lot of guys that were desirable for the Clippers until all of a sudden, out of nowhere, everybody was available on the back-to-back, which is just not normal Clippers types of rotation. No, yeah. Uh, I heard, like, rumblings that Mark that Morris was probable, and I was like, man, they might all play. Who knows? And yeah. They all played. It threw me for a real curveball, but also that's why, you know, from the members-only video today, we talked about, you know, one of your bigger points is have 
multiple guys available if you need to make changes late. When you got to make a 1v1, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, you yeah. don't like Kawhi, but you only got one roster spot, and you're like, well, I kind of just have to run with him. But when you have a desirable, i.e. Kings versus Bulls game available to make lots of pivots, it just makes your life a lot easier. I thought I think it also helps to like plan that stuff out. Obviously, you can't plan it exactly because you never know what's going to happen. But like, don't go into it and like have no idea where you want to go because then it's just going to be really frustrating when stuff happens, right? Like in that first last night, like I had Kobe White and Harrison Barnes and guys like that that I they weren't the top of my list, but they were all in that honorable mention section. So if all of a sudden every Clipper plays and I don't like those guys more, I know I have pivots I can use. It's not always like that, but I had looked at that late game knowing that I just have like eight guys who are honorable mention to me. I can roll at those last game. You don't always get that. though. No, but you knew that going in. Yeah. And that was planned that way because if all of a sudden Paul George, Kawhi and Marcus Morris are playing like, I don't want Luke Kennard on my squad if all those guys are out there. For sure. No doubt about that. All right, guys. Thank you. Uh, click the thumbs up button. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.